of India. The summit is supported by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology Government of India and Niti Aayog. We would like to thank our digital financial management partner, EaseBus, conversational messaging partner, Gupsha, session partner, GoQuick, gold partners, Manorma Online, Bling Digital and Yellow.ai, silver partner, ShareChat. I'm Neha Gadhi from IMAI, your host for this session. Well, it's time for the last session of the day, the fireside chat on how Telangana State is prompting startups with right policies. I'd like to welcome our honorable guest, Shri Jayesh Ranjanji, Principal Secretary, Industries and Commerce and IT, Electronics and Communication Departments, Government of Telangana. And the session will be moderated by Mr. Aman Jain, Head Government Affairs and Public Policy, Google. Over to you, Mr. Jain. Thank you, Neha, and uh, uh, welcome to everyone. Um, I understand that it's been a day of uh, scintillating conversations, and hopefully the last conversation of today uh, for all of you is also uh, on the same line. So uh, I'm sure through the day you've heard about uh, uh, how India is now host to um, the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. Um, you know, almost on a weekly basis, we get to hear about a new unicorn and it's incredibly exciting for all of us who are part of the industry to see such phenomenal growth. Um, and really, I, you know, uh, I, I work at Google, but as Google, but generally in the industry, you know, in, investor confidence is always boosted by um, ease in compliance requirements, um, the support that one gets from the government, and uh, and and there is no other state that uh, really comes to mind uh, when we talk about those things in Telangana. It has been a front runner in providing a conducive environment to startups for many years now, uh, and uh, uh, and really has had. Um, created so many different institutions, uh, you know, institutions like T-Hub and Task and T-Works and many others um, that really are um, a, a model for for many of the other state governments in the country to uh, to follow. Um, before I sort of get into some of these, um, um, you know, specific points, um, you know, delighted to welcome uh, uh, Mr. Jayesh Ranjan to uh, to this conversation. Um, he's someone I've known for many years and and, and admired deeply. Um, uh, with with the passion that he brings to uh, essentially make Telangana an incredibly uh, uh, sort of uh, a location that all of us are very excited about, an attractive location for large companies as well as uh, startups to look at uh, in in bringing in investments. He's been at the forefront of driving many of the um, policies in the Telangana state across various departments. Uh, for this conversation, we'll stick to one part of his uh, portfolio. He has a very, very wide range of portfolio, but we'll stick to uh, the IT and uh, uh, manufacturing and and communication portfolio of uh, of his work. So, um, you know, before we get into questions, uh, firstly, sir, welcome to uh, to this discussion. And uh, uh, if you'd like to say uh, share a few remarks before we get into uh, some of the questions. Sure, Raman. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Let me begin by thanking and complimenting the IAMAI, the Internet and Mobile Association of India, of uh, bringing states' perspectives into this uh, session, in, into this entire uh, uh, two days conference, rather, because normally what happens is that uh, many of these kind of national conferences, they tend to eventually end up taking a very uh, kind of center-centric view. But we all know that lots of action happens in the state. So first of all, I'm very grateful that you are giving me as a, uh, giving me a chance as a representative of the Telangana state to speak about my experiences share my experiences and uh, there's a lot to share and i'm very sure that when aman asks uh, various kinds of questions i'll uh, be able to s share with you lots of nuances on how the startup policy evolved what kind of uh, features the policy has what has been the experience in implementing these policies over the last uh, seven and a half years or so telangana as many of you would recall is a new state it was uh, formed in june 2014 so we have precisely about seven and a half years of experience behind. So a lot of uh, positives, lots of learnings in these seven and a half years. And hopefully in the next uh, 30 minutes or so that we chat, Aman and I, I'll be able to highlight many of these things, which also will be of immense value to other states. If there are participants from other states, listeners from other states, state officials, they, instead of reinventing the wheel, they will get a sense of how one can also do it. If, we can do it in Telangana. Why can't someone else also try and do it? Perhaps even do it better than us. So, hopefully, that will be the good. That will be a couple of good takeaways from this conversation. Um, in fact, just uh, taking off from there, um, 
you know, just as a broad question to just get us started uh, in the in the beginning, um, you know, how would you think about um, sort of, you know, you spoke about this. I mentioned it in my opening remarks that Telangana has always been in, you know, always had a, a very attractive ecosystem that's fostered innovation. Um, startups have uh, have thrown to Telangana to to set themselves up. Uh, you know, I mentioned some of these institutions, but at a broad level, uh, could you uh, help us understand how these institutions uh, and policies have helped in uh, promoting the state's vibrant uh, startup environment? Yes, Saman. So <clears throat> give me the liberty of maybe a longish kind of answer. And sure. uh, uh, then perhaps some of your subsequent questions might get subsumed in what I speak now, but otherwise I'll elaborate on certain other things that you would like to know more of. So let me go back to the very beginning. As I mentioned, uh, seven and a half years ago, the new state of Telangana was created and some of the people who have followed our uh, contemporary history, etc. will note that one of the biggest uh, grouses of people of Telangana was that when they were a part of the combined state of Andhra Pradesh, was that opportunities were not coming their way. All the opportunities were getting knocked off by people who were in that area. And therefore, the demand to have your own state and take care of your own development, your own priorities, and so on and so forth. So when the state eventually came into being in 2014, uh, our Minister for Information Technology, Mr. K.T. Ramarao, uh, with whom I work very closely, uh, he conducted a session in the Indian School of Business. ISB, as you would know, is uh, located in Hyderabad. And uh, that session was called uh, Envisioning Telangana. I mean, what all has the new state got to do? What should be its priority? So we have seen uh, decades of uh, uh, period when the state has been deprived of its rights. People have missed on opportunities. So how do you really, and I remember in that session, minister used a very uh, kind of a very poetic and poetic expression. See, normally when we speak about development and doing it fast, sometimes we use expressions like let us fast track it, or uh, uh, sometimes we say that let us, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, do it very, very quick. So he used an expression, uh, pole vault, that how can we really pole vault uh, in terms of our ambitions? We have missed on so many years, valuable years. So how can we really catch up? And catch up is not uh, just fast tracking or uh, moving at a quicker pace, but we really have to pull. I mean, it's not just fast forwarding or leapfrogging. We have to really pole vault. And uh, I remember speaker after speaker uh, in that session, which we had in ISB. And these were just uh, days of uh, the formation of the new state of Telangana. They told us that uh, the new state should rely on technology because amazing innovations are happening the world over. And if te Telangana becomes a technology enabled state, whatever uh, time has been lost, you should be able to catch up and you can even do much, much better. So that was message number one. And the second message, which was also delivered at the same time was that today, most of the very path breaking, very transformational technologies that we witness across the world are coming from the world of uh, startups. I mean, not to suggest that large institutions don't do anything, or uh, corporates don't do anything. I mean, they continue to do their stuff, but much more exciting stuff is uh, coming from the world of startups. So they told us that, the state should embrace technology and should startups which are of these uh, technologies. So that was a very clear message. And uh, in those days, in 2014, uh, Hyderabad had some startups, not to say that uh, Hyderabad was nowhere in the picture, but it was a very, very nascent stage. In fact, the city had two incubators, one incidentally in ISB itself, and one was in IIIT. And there were roughly around uh, 200 odd uh, startups in the whole of uh, the city. So minister suggested to me that let us sit with some of these startups to understand what do they want and what can we do to them on behalf of the government. So after a few days, I was able to mobilize some 30, 40 of those startups. And we again had a meeting with them to, uh, to directly ask them, what do you want uh, the government to do for you? And uh, now, of course, we can look back and uh, laugh at it. But I remember when we asked this question that what can the government do for you? Many of them actually told us that if the government stays away from us, that is the biggest help the government can do to us. So, uh, but obviously, I mean, while you say so, you can also understand where these answers are coming from. So obviously their thinking was that if 
government gets into you know over regulation micromanagement putting this checks that uh, conditions that will stifle the thriving uh, possibilities of a startup uh, ecosystem so we understood that this this was their concern and we of course clarified to them the government has no interest in over regulation no interest in micromanagement however we would like so we asked the question in a different way so we phrased it by asking are there some challenges that you face are there any pain points that you still have do you think uh, government can have can uh, has the ability to solve any of your pain points so when we asked that kind of question some answers did come out for example i mean there are many answers which came out but i'll give you one uh, quick answer and you mentioned about thub etc so it links to why did we go for thub so uh, since you have come to hyderabad before and obviously google's largest office in uh, india is also located here you know that all that is located in a enclave which is called cyberabad i mean those who live in hyderabad will know that uh, cyberabad is where all this technology companies the knowledge institution even isb is located in cyberabad for that matter so any startup obviously would like to remain connected he would like to be in cyberabad so that he doesn't miss out on any of the action but uh, th this is an urban reality that if a happening place of that kind is there the rentals also will be very very high and obviously startups will not be able to afford the cyberabad kind of rentals and therefore they'll be forced to set up their offices let us say in sikandrabad in begampet in amirpet etc etc so they mentioned this as a pain point that we want to be in cyberabad but we can't afford to be there and they gave many other such uh, pain points so uh, what we felt was that our policy should uh, instead of being very aspirational and very wishy washy we should precisely answer all these pain points that the startups are bringing to our notice and that was the first step we felt that uh, we should show our intent by coming out with a policy which takes care of all their concerns all their challenges all their pain points so if you look at our policy see this is something which people speak about our country that great policies are written they are they are written in beautiful english they are printed in glossy paper and everything looks very nice but very little of it is translated into action and one of it is that the policies are not written in a very actionable kind of a way they are uh, you know very motherhood kind of broad statements good intent but what direction do you need to take how do you translate that into action that is not really specified in the policy so if you care to read our startup and innovation policy this is one difference that you will notice instantly that every sentence of that policy addresses some pain point of the startups and since i spoke about this issue of not being able to afford space in the cyberabad area the policy told us i mean the policy guided us uh, or mandated upon the government that we will create space which we will make uh, available to startups at a very very reasonable rate so uh, some of you may know that 7 6 years ago we constructed uh, what is now called as the t hub it is uh, the country's largest uh, technology incubator it is uh, built over 70000 square feet can host uh, 800 startups has become a kind of a icon of uh, hyderabad today people of course charminar and all are traditional icons but the face of the modern india is uh, t hub lots of people come there but i'll tell something more uh, amazing aman so while we built uh, t hub and we offer space to the startups at a very very nominal price we recognize that uh, there is uh, lots of appetite for this kind of and of course t hub is much more than space which i'll tell you later but right now since the question is about how do you make space available at an affordable rate i'm confining myself to the space part of t hub so we recognize that there is a huge demand for similar kind of space so now uh, we are ready to come up with the second phase of t hub i mentioned a while ago that t hub is the largest in the country the second phase which will be ready in another maybe couple of months is five times bigger than t hub so it is five times bigger than what is already the biggest in the country this is 350000 square feet of space where 4000 startups can uh, work uh, together so this is the way we uh, approach every issue for which the government has enough seriousness that you do a bottom up exercise understand from the stakeholders what do they want create a policy which answers all of that and then go around and uh, take steps to implement it uh, and uh, and uh, and i think testament to um to what you've said our own experience in telangana has always been that that it has been a case where 
you know, uh, uh, we, like you said, we our largest operations in the country are in Telangana. We are building the largest campus for Google outside of uh, Mountain View, our largest campus in the world uh, will uh, will be in um, uh, Telangana as well. And uh, and I think um, a big part of it is essentially the support that we've always as an industry received from you personally, uh, which is a, which has always been um, uh, incredibly um, sort of uh, welcoming for us. Um, one of the things, uh, one of the themes you touched upon briefly, and I want to go back to that. Um, you know, you mentioned it uh, in your initial remarks that how a lot of times in these conversations, it becomes a very center heavy conversation and it's not a conversation where states are uh, right there. So uh, I just wanted to go into that federal part a little bit and just check with you on, um, you know, uh, obviously Telangana has taken a lead on this, but we're seeing this across different state governments where they're developing their own tech policies on cloud and data centers on cybersecurity on, on many of these themes. And so how do you view these in terms of convergence with the Indian uh, federal structure and uh, and particularly in terms of both compliance but also how do you make this uh, something which is a um, USP for a state when investors are looking at um, uh, their investment decisions sure Raman so uh, <clears throat> one good thing about our country is the the federal structure of our country is that states also get lots of autonomy so uh, I'm I'm sure uh, all the viewers also know this that the flagship uh, digital initiative of the national government is called Digital India. Seven years ago, it was launched by Honorable Prime Minister. And uh, many states have uh, gone ahead and created their own versions of Digital India. So in Telangana also, we have our version, which is called Digital Telangana. In fact, we had started working on Digital Telangana much before Digital India was announced. But uh, subsequently, Digital India became the national flagship program. So the federal autonomy that we get is again something very important for us because we can uh, do things which are much more ambitious much more audacious than digital india goals also so i'll just give you an example digital india has a very important component of providing digital infrastructure to people of the country whether they are living in rural areas or urban areas and that uh, flagship program is called bharat net so bharat net in the present avatar uh, mandates uh, that broadband connectivity will be provided till the panchayat headquarter but in telangana we felt and this is much much before covid i mean now of course uh, everyone will acknowledge that every person has to be digitally connected because of the kind of disruption that we have seen in the last two years or so but much before covid itself our government had uh, taken a decision a very bold decision that we will take broadband to the doorstep of every household and this is not a small number. I mean, Telangana may be a bifurcated state, but it is by no means uh, a very small state. We still have about uh, eight and a half million households in the state. And obviously, many of them will be in remote areas, in forests, on hilltops and all that. So regardless of where you are, we have taken the responsibility of providing high quality optic fiber cable based broadband right till your doorstep. So uh, the federal structure allows that we get this autonomy. But at the same time, we try to align ourselves with the national programs, the national initiatives. But one other thing which we have seen is that at the national level also, there are many sectors in which we or a few other states like us are far ahead of national thinking. So you spoke about data centers. Uh, as you would know, the national government is now attempting an exercise to create a national data center policy. In Telangana, the data center policy exists from 2016 itself. Five years have gone by and uh, we have reaped uh, some very good uh, results also of the of the national policy. Similarly, uh, there are many other policies also which uh, our state has done something much before the idea came into uh, the minds of national government. Some other states have taken the lead in certain other areas as well. So uh, fortunately, the there's no kind of uh, barriers to states' ambitions, states' own uh, intentions, etc. And uh, if you are a progressive step, you need to have uh, what your intent is announced very, very clearly through the through these kind of policy documents or framework documents. I'll give you another example. We are again one of the first states, uh, the first state rather, to come up uh, with a policy on drones. How do you utilize drones? And we also started lots of drones-related trials. And now we see that uh, the national thinking is also converging in the same way as uh, we have thought of. 
but aman i'd like to uh, add one more uh, point in about uh, the telangana story so uh, i don't want people to get uh, an impression that writing a good policy or a bottom up policy or a policy which directly addresses stakeholders pain points or concerns is sufficient i mean that is just the first step in fact i told you a while ago that uh, this is something which uh, india faces this criticism that is india faces quite frequently that uh, policies are written but nothing happens on the ground and one of the reasons i mentioned was that the policies are not written in a very actionable way but there is another more important reason in my opinion and that reason is that uh, no one takes the accountability or the responsibility to implement that policy so for example i am the it secretary if uh, someone tells me that uh, you have to implement the startup policy or you have to implement the data center policy i mean uh, my bandwidth will be very easily exhausted and eventually at some point in time i just will not be able to do justice i'll have to move on to something else and the policy will then uh, get into a limbo so in telangana we are very conscious of this fact that unless you create institutions whose sole responsibility it is to implement those policies action will not really happen on the ground in a optimal way or a satisfactory way so uh, the responsibility to implement uh, our startup and innovation policy also has therefore been uh, devolved on multiple institutions which also uh, if you understand the way the layout of these institutions etc you will appreciate the thinking process and how we have created this institution so for example to encourage uh, basic uh, innovation technology based innovation we created t hub then we recognize that uh, hardware guys people who are interested in a hardware product or uh, who are uh, who require some prototyping kind of assistance t hub is not the place for them because there is no equipment there is no machinery available for them to do that so we created an institution which is called t bar then we realized that uh, in both t hub and t works the proportion of women entrepreneurs women startups is very few small as compared to their presence in the population then we felt that we required to provide the full attention to women entrepreneurs we created another institution called v hub then we realized that uh, t hub v hub uh, etc are good but they are catering typically to you know hyderabad centric this urban english speaking kind of people and so much of talent which exists in the rural areas the grassroots innovators the social innovators we are missing out on them so we created another institution which is called tsic the telangana state innovation cell which looks at rural we also found that when we create great institutions like t hub we have t works etc there must be a pipeline created which supplies Uh, talented entrepreneurs people with lots of drive and passion who can occupy these uh, seats that i spoke about i told you that we are creating 4000 seats in second phase of tm mm-hmm. but where is the pipeline so we decided to work with college students school students also we created another institution to look at that schools and colleges which is called task then we recognize that in hyderabad there are large number of r&d institutions of international repute but uh, unfortunately their doors are typically uh, closed to the startups startups find it very difficult to go to let us say some of these defense uh, labs or some of these uh, life sciences institutions some agri institutions that are there in hyderabad we created another institution called rich whose only job is to bring the startups closer to these research institutions so that is one of the reasons why you see so much of action happening in that in telangana because there are people whose responsibility it is to implement parts of that uh, startup policy and each institution again has been created based on a felt need and uh, has been given a very targeted focused responsibility and the last point which i want to make is that uh, again institutions can be created on paper but in telangana we are very very conscious of the fact that the talent to run these institutions is also very important and most uh, often there is much better talent available for running such institutions outside the government rather than within the government i'm i'm not suggesting at all that people in the government are not good enough but there are better people more talented people more experienced people outside the government who can uh, run these institutions better so each of these institutions that i talk about are run by professionals whom we have recruited from the open market and uh, i am proud to share with you while government of india speaks about lateral entry and there is so much of national debate about it for the last 7 years or so there are at least 200 people 
who work in these institutions. Not even one of them is from the government. We have picked the best talent from the open market and they run the show in each of these institutions with support different aspects of innovation and uh, entrepreneurial activities in the state. Um, um, and then again, you know, as, as industry, I think we've, we've seen this, right? That there's this model um, actually, uh, you know, I think uh, is, is one that's proven to work uh, in a way where, you know, in some of the uh, other locations, there could be a case where uh, uh, the IT department is sort of the end all and be all of all conversations and, and, and things can't move as fast as uh, they do. So I think, you know, as a model of having these sort of empowered institutions, it's, it's worked really well. And, and we can see that uh, in, in the pace of development and growth in, in Telangana. Uh, for the next couple of questions, I just want to go a little sort of broader. And and I'll come back to uh, specific policy questions, but um, you know, from sort of your uh, uh, vantage point, and uh, you mentioned this a little bit that because you know all of us are um, uh, unfortunately still in the middle of this pandemic, um, it, it really has uh, sort of underlined the significance of technology um, as uh, as you know an enabler of obviously economic activity, but also um, social activity. Um, and, and Telangana has been uh, taking a lead in, in some of the sort of, you know, use cases, whether it's in healthcare or in education, in agriculture. Uh, but from, from your vantage point, what are the other sectors that the government's looking at where you think that the industry and particularly the, um, our friends from startups who are on this call right now, how they can work closely with you? What would be those other sectors, priority sectors in your mind uh, and, and where opportunities would be to work closely with you and your team? See, uh, <clears throat> Aman, about uh, four months ago in uh, September, actually, in August. See, so uh, I told you that Telangana became a new state in 2014. And then we started the process of consulting stakeholders, et cetera, et cetera. So in 2016, we came up with the first IT policy of the state. And uh, typically, government policies have a tenure of five years. So the policy got expired in... Uh, 2021 last year that is first first half of last year and then it was necessitated that we bring out the second policy the revised uh, it policy so i remember when we were briefing our uh, honorable chief minister on how we are designing the it policy what are our thoughts about the it policy what are the emerging areas that we want to focus on i mean he listened to all of it but he eventually he made only one suggestion and uh, his suggestion is so kind of uh, fundamental, his uh, words were, he spoke in Telugu, translated in English. He told to us that uh, no technology is worth it if it doesn't make a difference in the lives of the common person. And uh, that became the guiding principle for us. That, uh, I mean, you may be, I mean, there's no need to get carried away by, let us say, artificial intelligence or blockchain or cybersecurity. I mean, all those are important. I, I mean, you are from a technology company which uh, runs the world using some of these uh, 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 domains, which is fine. But his thought was that it should make a difference in the lives of the common people. And today I really feel so even more than before after looking at the experiences uh, over the last two years. See, I told you that we are creating a digital infrastructure at a very fast pace. Government of India also has expanded the scope of BharatNet. We, in any case, had decided much ahead in time that we will take internet right to right to the doorstep of the people. But uh, and we have we have made uh, good progress in that. But we have also seen one other factor, uh, and this is something which we should all become as much as we can, which is that. Let us say there is a family or a household which is living in some remote area or some rural area. And let us say they went to bed today and when they woke up in the morning, someone tells them that, hey, there is internet uh, broadband uh, at your doorstep. You will find that at least uh, a large majority of them, to them it will mean nothing. It's not that the moment they hear that, hey, there is internet at your doorstep, they'll start jumping in joy and they'll rush out and they'll buy a laptop or a smartphone. I mean, for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people, it will make no difference. If you tell them that uh, there's internet at your doorstep, they'll only be puzzled by that. Of course, some of them uh, may also not be able to afford uh, devices and stuff like that. But for many of them, this will not be a great priority. So 
this has made us think that we are spending so much of time and effort and there is so much of an emergency kind of an action happening on the ground to take broadband everywhere. But where is the buy-in from the people? I mean, are people prepared to optimally use all these things that you are, uh, you are uh, taking forward? Of course, digital literacy is important. So many people are not digitally literate and therefore they don't value the benefits that internet or broadband can bring to you. And therefore in the national digital India program also, digital literacy has been emphasized upon. We continue to give priority to digital literacy, but more than digital literacy, the experience of last five, six years has, has shown to us that if you are able to show to the commonest of the person that this technology has made kind of difference. If this was not to have happened, you would have continued to either uh, be deprived of certain livelihood opportunities, or you would have missed out on something, or something else would have happened. It will not uh, register uh, in their minds at all. So the most important priority today is to find solutions which will help a common person. And in Telangana, uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> there are many such opportunities because the lives of common persons have multiple dimensions, multiple layers. But for example, in Telangana, we have felt that agriculture can be a one very important aspect because huge number of rural families, rural livelihoods depend upon agriculture. Either they are farmers themselves or they work in farms and so on and so forth. So we have given lots of priority to innovations in agriculture, lots of startup uh, uh, solutions have been onboarded in our state. We have created a very good uh, implementation mechanism part with the help of uh, agriculture department, agriculture university, private companies, startups, international organizations like the World Economic Forum and so on and so forth. So very good platform has been created. And in the, for the past two cropping seasons, lots of startup solutions have been actually onboarded in Telangana and the initial results are very, very encouraging. So that is one area where we want to focus uh, quite a lot. Uh, health, as we all know, in the last two years, and quite understandably so, the focus of the healthcare uh, providers has been on COVID management. But at the same time, people who have other kinds of ailments, that has kind of taken a back seat, and people have also suffered because of that. So what kind of, uh, uh, you know, decentralized solutions and uh, implementation mechanisms are available so that other ailments can also be managed. And obviously COVID will be behind us at some point in time. So how do you make the healthcare more democratic, more decentralized, more accessible, and so on and so forth. So some good work is happening, some very, very brilliant solutions, which have some of which have actually come from uh, T-Hub based uh, startups, et cetera, that are getting rolled out. Education remains a very important priority. We also felt that along with education, while education is for people who are in colleges or schools, et cetera, there's also a large uh, uh, size, sized uh, population which has completed formal education but requires skilling inputs. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, are, they have it, they are knob ready because there is something missing in their, uh, in their uh, repertoire, which can be supplemented through targeted skilling programs. And we find that, uh, both uh, in the pre-pandemic days and even during the last two years, the delivery styles and the content and the ability to follow up and meet the expectations of the employers and the candidates, etc. Lots of uh, gaps were there. So skilling is again an area which we are uh, emphasizing uh, quite a lot. And uh, of course, while doing all these things, we want to do everything in a very inclusive manner, in a very equitable manner. So focus on, uh, let us say, the poorest of the poor, the women, persons with disabilities, and uh, you know, disadvantaged communities, and so on and so forth. So these will remain our priorities over the next uh, few years for sure. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really glad you brought up uh, skilling. Um, that was one of the questions I did want to get into. Uh, uh, with you as well. And I think a couple of other things that we touched, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sundar, who, you know, you've met, and he also uh, very often speaks about the idea at Google as well, which is through our products, what we want to be as a company is helpful. And and that is, uh, that's exactly where I think what you were saying with uh, what the Honorable Chief Minister talked about, that it needs to be able to be technology on its own is great, 
but then it needs to be helpful for people in their daily lives and not in an intrusive manner, but you have it at your beck and call when you need it. Um, and I think that, you know, that would resonate with with a lot of people. Um, I, I wanted to touch upon something that you said towards the end and just elaborate on that a little bit, if I could ask you to, uh, which is, um, you know, you've been at the forefront of driving tech. Like you said, you had the first ICT policy in, in 2016. Uh, even now in, in the new ICT policy, there are new concepts that you brought in, homepreneurship, for instance, or, uh, you know, the focus you've got on social innovation. You've done a lot of these things. But as someone who's driven this and has been watching this space very closely uh, over the years, um, you know, what would be sort of the exciting things for you in the next 10 years? What would be the things that you would look at and say, you know, as, as the Telangana government, because you've always been early adopters, whether it was on AI, on ML, on many of these things where you were actually uh, seeing, you mentioned agriculture, for instance, that Telangana is really at the forefront in many of these things that we are already seeing on ground impact on. So what would be sort of the things that would excite you from your vantage point for the next 10 years, uh, where you'd say that these are areas that you are excited about uh, with, with technology? And, and one of the key reasons I'm asking you that is, as industry, then how can we work with you uh, in, in sort of shaping and enabling that thinking? Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, so, uh, as I said, seven and a half ex years of experience is uh, behind us now, and certain uh, results are already uh, seen to be real game changers. We feel very, very proud that we could accomplish some of these things. So seven and a half years ago, when we thought of, when, as I told you, we were given this message very unequivocally that you should engage with startups. Uh, lot of people told us this is not an area where government should uh, get into. People continue to tell us that uh, Silicon Valley is the gold standard for a startup ecosystem. Many governments have tried to replicate Silicon Valley in their own backyards with spectacular failures. And people cautioned us that you will also eventually have egg on your face. And uh, they told us, I mean, ideally, I should not name any other city or a state, but they spoke about another very prominent Indian city, which is considered to be the Indian Silicon Valley. And people told us that, see, that city has emerged as the Indian Silicon Valley without the government doing anything. I mean, it has. It has reached that position despite the government. And that is the message everyone told that you better kind of uh, leave it to the market forces and so on and so forth. But we were very clear that uh, while many others could have failed, but we should understand what exactly are the key ingredients which has made Silicon Valley. And Silicon Valley is just an example. There are many others as well the world over where uh, what, what exactly has worked for them. And is it possible for us while we don't get in the face of people and get in the face of institutions. Can we really play that catalyzing role in creating, bringing those ingredients together? So just as an example, in Silicon Valley, uh, as you would know, uh, Stanford, Berkeley, some of these Caltech, some of these institutions have played a very important role. Mm -hmm. They have become the pioneers where some of the earliest uh, startup ideas, including your own company's founders, they, they all have origins in these institutions. Hyderabad that way is very uh, fortunate. We have also great institutions like the Indian School of Business, the IIIT. There's a great uh, law school here in Hyderabad called Nalsar, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And we were very uh, lucky that all these institutions came on board instantly. The moment we reached out and told us that we are trying to create a uh, startup ecosystem, but the institutions like yours must drive it. And we expect you to do these, these, these things. Their participation was uh, really uh, wholehearted and very, very uh, deep and very engaged. Similarly, there are certain things which uh, we were very successful in uh, creating in our policy, which today have become a national kind of uh, benchmarks. So one feature in our policy is, and since uh, you also uh, support startups in many ways, you would have come across this feedback quite commonly. Startups do complain that uh, finding the first customer is very, very difficult because it's such a competitive world and startups don't have the wherewithal really to advertise aggressively, go to market aggressively in the initial stages. So in our Telangana startup and innovation policy, we have a feature that if you are a homegrown startup and if you have a product or a solution that is of relevance to the government, I will procure it bilaterally. There will be no procurement process. You don't have to place a bid or outbid someone and so on and so forth. So again, these kind of policies have helped 
the ecosystem to really develop. And as I told you in the very beginning, we have relied on the best talent available in the market to drive the ecosystem. We have no presence at all, we meaning the government, in any of the activities which happen in the, in the, in the state through any of our uh, ecosystem partners. They run it completely based on merits and uh, based on their own judgment. So this satisfies us quite a lot. Another thing, I'll be quick. I know that uh, we have very few minutes left. When we started uh, our journey, we also were a very uh, kind of perfect, perplexing uh, statistic that uh, the failure rate, what is called the value of death amongst the startups is very, very high. And uh, people even used to tell us that 90% of the startups don't uh, do well. I, I won't use the word fail because in a startup uh, uh, culture, we don't see anything called uh, failure or uh, success in that sense. But uh, the initial success is very limited and we hope that we will be able to change that. And again, these are early days. T-Hub, for example, is just uh, six years old. So I can't provide a very uh, definitive kind of uh, 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 principle before you, but our track record has been much, much uh, higher. Our success rates, the ability of our startups to find uh, very good collaborators, people funding them, they getting uh, work orders, they showcasing their solutions in uh, international competitions, national competitions. That is something which we find to be very, very satisfactory. And the third thing is, uh, again, which satisfies our us quite a lot that people talk about emerging technologies. For example, I spoke about artificial intelligence, blockchain, etc. Again, we are uh, the leaders in many of these emerging technologies in a very structured and organized way. We identify areas where some of these emerging technologies can be very profitably used. I told you about agriculture, how our entire focus, a uh, substantial focus rather, is on agriculture. Many of these solutions that we are working on are uh, enabled or enriched using uh, some of these emerging technologies. So these three things have been of enormous uh, satisfaction in the seven and a half years of journey that we have had. Um, so before I uh, pass it on to uh, uh, our host who uh, are giving us not so subtle hints on uh, that our time's coming to an end, uh, anything sir, um, else that you'd like to sort of uh, comment on or uh, we've touched a broad spectrum of topics, but I just wanted to make sure that um, you know, in the next sort of minute, minute and a half, so, if you have anything else that so, you'd like to yeah. So, Aman, I'll uh, go back to where I said it by complimenting IAMAI for giving states a chance. So, the last message which I want to leave with all the listeners and all the viewers is see, while uh, India is a great country and uh, our uh, national programs and national uh, goals, etc., are very uh, kind of attractive, but Actually, there are 28 Indias within this India. So the message is to find out which of these 28 Indias is progressive, is supportive of technology, is supportive of technology creators, which of that India has uh, congenial policies where uh, people really walk the talk instead of just uh, speaking about all kinds of things and platitudes. And then you align yourself with that India. And the beauty of our federal structure is that you are permitted to. Suppose a startup wants to set up its headquarters in Hyderabad. You don't have to take anyone's permission in Delhi to do so. You just have to come over and meet any one of us and just uh, go and start straight away. So this is a message for uh, everyone. I mean, Google, as you yourself mentioned, has the largest footprint in India here in Hyderabad. And uh, there's a reason why they have chosen to do that. So uh, this is an open invitation to everyone, all startups, all technology uh, collaborators who are on this uh, call, please look up to Telangana and Hyderabad as a very, very conducive and uh, a business friendly destination that you can get in the country. And uh, do reach out to us if you want us to help you in any way. Yeah, um, I could only uh, um, sort of uh, massively endorse that and, and second that in any way. And if anyone has any questions, and uh, uh, you know, I'm also happy to uh, answer them and tell them about our uh, fantastic experience that we've had. Uh, in Telangana and particularly in working with you and uh, thank you for your leadership um, you know over the past few years I think uh, it really is a, um, a model for many many other state governments to uh, to follow so um, you know just uh, again thank you uh, uh, Mr. Ranjan for uh, what I think and hopefully for for our 
listeners has been an enriching uh, conversation. I'd also uh, just like to thank IMAI and uh, Niti Aayog for, for uh, bringing together the India Digital uh, Summit. Uh, uh, it's an engaging platform for the industry, for the government and other stakeholders uh, to exchange uh, um, ideas uh, on, on you know, what is essentially an incredibly dynamic sector. Um, thank you to everyone who's tuned in and uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening and uh, and, and wish that you and your families st uh, stay safe. Uh, uh, with that, uh, Neha, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jain, and thank you so much, um, Mr. Mr. Ranjan. It was genuinely a very, very informative and very engaging discussion. Thank you so much for moderating it so well. And I think uh, a lot of comments are such that people are really giving a lot of kudos to how Tilangna is doing so much in this uh, startup space. Thank you to all our attendees who are here with us today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. with very exciting lineup of sessions. 